For the first time in a decade, Hero has decided to enter the performance bike market. But with Bajaj leading the way for so many years and other Japanese manufacturers stepping in with more and more options, is Hero a little bit too late in the game? To find out, we went to the Hero X-Pulse launch at High Tech Hero Kolkata. At the launch event, we got to experience the unveiling of two new bikes, the X-Pulse 200 and the 200T. Before we go into the specs, I would like to point out that the bikes are available at prices that are very close to Japanese 150cc motorcycles, but they outperform every 150cc motorcycle that they are priced in comparison to. If you are thinking of getting a 150cc bike, then you can consider these instead. The 200T is the most unconventional and stylish bike of the lot. Hero has given LED headlamps and tail lamps along with conventional bulb type indicators. The long supermoto style seat is cushy and gets luggage mounting area on the tail section and a plastic bash plate at the bottom for two worthy features. I would like to mention that the X-Pulse 200 more off-road version gets a metallic bash plate. The console also displays a ton of information including two trip meters showing average speed and even Bluetooth integration for turn-by-turn -turn navigation using your phone and an eco mode for mileage freaks out there. As you can see, the seating position is very upright and the handlebars are significantly raised with the foot pegs right underneath your waist and that low 800mm seat height which is useful for shorter riders. The 199.6cc single cylinder engine is air cooled and has a carburetor which is not the latest technology in 2019, no FI and no liquid cooling. It produces 18.1 horsepower and 70 newton meters of torque which is lower than the Apache 200 or the FC25. Braking duties are performed by a 276mm disc up front and a 220mm disc at the rear. The X-Pulse FI version also has a battle disc at the rear. Bike is equipped with a single channel ABS. Front tire is 100 by 80 and the rear is 130 by 70. In my experience, such tires create issues in high speed stability and especially in cornering. Brakes and tires should not be compromised with and now even 150cc bikes like the Hornet or the FC V3 which we reviewed very recently come with a 140 rear section tire. So this could have been avoided by Hero on a bike that they want to target to the highway touring audience. Suspension is a 37mm standard telescopic suspension up front and a 7-step preload adjustable motor shock at the rear. Now it's time for the ride discussion. Unfortunately, my mic did not capture any audio and I had to do a voiceover. Sorry about that. Alright, so let's get started. The side stand was off. Just putting it back on. No side stand alarm. Didn't expect it. Right off the bat, I would tell you this does not feel like a typical naked bike. The 800mm seat height, but it is a bit higher, feels a bit higher than that, probably because of the wide seat. Take a U-turn here. Extremely easy bike to U-turn with, as you can see. Now, I would say the riding position is similar to the Mahindra Mojo. If you have ever sat on a Mahindra Mojo, you know what the feeling is about. The suspension has a higher amount of travel, so there is very little front end feel. It feels more like an adventure bike. This is a city riding experience, so let's just keep it to that. The comfort is very good. The handlebars are higher, so even for shorter riders, this is probably the only adventure tourer you can get. And think of it if you th think that the x 200 with the 823mm seat height is too much, I guess this bike with 177mm of ground clearance would be good enough for you even in off-roads. So yeah, maybe for the shorter riders this is your off-road bike as well. For taller riders you can obviously go for the spoke wheel version. Now the power delivery is kind of different, it's not like the other. 200 cc motorcycles out there it's quite flickable that's what i like it's lightweight the front end is pretty light and as you can ride you will feel that more often 
but the power delivery you know it has that kind of lag it doesn't really excite you for example say ktm or pulse rs200 or pulse ns200 they have a different sort of power delivery this is more like when you're riding a commuter like a jixer or even a pulsar 150 that sort of power delivery now looking down at the foot pegs they're right underneath you so that feels very comfortable you as if you were sitting in a very natural position there is no front end lean so some people like a 10 15 degree lean forward it's not there on this bike if you are that type of a relaxed rider who just prefers cruising in the city within the city and in the highway this probably is a good bike for you and yeah it does feel more powerful than usual typical 150 cc motorcycles so that's a good thing now we don't have the opportunity to test out brakes on this one we will be taking out the 200 off-roader version that's the x-pulse 200 and the uh, extreme 200 r tomorrow for a full road test so stay tuned for that and then we'll be doing full review this is more like a city ride review so we'll concentrate on how it feels to ride within the city now i feel that the, this bike has a 13 liter fuel tank so the 13 liter fuel tank will give you enough mileage and a huge range of over 500 kilometers so you know fill it once i think it'll do the entire month's running such an easy bike for beginner riders that you can start with this bike a lot of people say this is my first motorcycle can i start on this i would give it the full go ahead for this riding style handlebars are not too wide so if you're thinking about tight filtering within the city this bike will be capable of doing that and all that we remains to be seen is the power and how it handles so we take another u-turn here as usual very light and easy bike to turn it's just 150 kgs guys so very lightweight motorcycle and opening up the throttle here and yeah it does accelerate but there is a slight amount of throttle lag which was there in the pulsar rs200 in the previous generation it was mostly there in this generation it has been somewhat fixed but here that is more prominent as you open up the throttle it doesn't immediately start going at it so there's no instant gratification so if you guys are like into sporty riding and if you like that instant performance kind of a thing it's not there the power is going to build up smoothly and slowly so if you don't like that kind of things then probably this bike's not for you and even some of the 150 cc bikes like fz v3 which we tested doesn't have that power lag but this bike does have it so that's the advantage of having a dohc engine or an sohc engine but this bike has a OHC configuration and a carburetor along with no liquid cooling. So that kind of takes away all of the technological advancements in the engine department that you get. Even 150cc bikes are turning into FI now and this one's still a carburetor. So that something might be you might be thinking because BS6 norms coming in very soon and every bike will be mandatory fi by then this bike also needs to turn and again we we are flicking it around this is not one of the most flickable bikes when you compare it to the fz v3 maybe that's a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more flickable i meant but this bike handlebars at least are quite narrow so you can easily move around in traffic and filter with it as i'll show you right now you know the best thing i think about motorcycles this should be light and with 150 kgs of curb weight you definitely feel this is one of the most lighter bikes and you know it still feels kind of little higher for a motorcycle which is 800 millimeters that happens some bikes with 800 feel pretty low this one is feeling on the higher side so if you're a shorter rider you might tell me again opening up the throttle and see what this motorcycle can do oh man even with the full throttle blast this is still doing pretty much okay i would say but that lag is there power is however very predictable and linearly building and uh, that's it that's the short ride because we've come back unfortunately we're cutting it short here and we just have to get the motorcycle back just putting it back into the dealership now so this is the dealership in Kajba near Ruby Hospital. So if you guys are looking to bo book any of the motorcycles, they have test drive vehicles for all these bikes as well. They let you test drive it. Do contact the numbers on screen for that. Let's get off the bike and we'll jump right into the ride conclusions. 
and what we feel about this motorcycle. Coming back from the short ride, I can tell you that the X-Pulse 200T is not perfect, but it's a good first attempt from Hero. The downsides are the thinner tires, for me that's the biggest downside. Then there is the lack of FI technology, air cooling and a 5-speed gearbox. I don't see it as a competition to the NS200, FZ25 or even the Apache 200, but if you've been thinking of getting a 150cc like the Apache 164V or the Hornet or even the Jixxer FZ V3, then you could easily go for this instead. It has all the similar level of features and even a few extra bits. Talk about performance, it is doing a lot better than most of the 150s out there. Now this is not exactly a naked bike with Street Fighter sharp handling, but if you want to take it out to tour, then those extra bits for luggage and the long comfortable seat for both rider and pillion will be a blessing for the relaxed rider. So Hero has kind of changed the market dynamics. They're offering a 200cc but when you compare the performance it is higher than a 150 and yet lower than a 200. But pricing wise they've kept it right up there along with the Japanese 150cc commuters. So I think they'll be able to woo in a large section of their market and especially those who buy the smaller bikes due to budget constraints and eventually end up taking them on long tours. So good job on Hero on addressing the touring market in India for which I feel there are very little options which are available in the economic segment. Bajaj is still somewhere lacking I would say for creating something in the adventure market. They started with the AS but they have now discontinued it, remains to be seen what they do in future. For now, if you really want a budget oriented tourer, think of it as a 160 to 175 cc motorcycle equivalent performance with a lot of comfort, decent ground clearance and, and really really comfortable suspension for bad roads. This is your motorcycle for both rider and pillion. So this is the Aero X-Pulse 200T Tudor version. We'll be taking out the X-Pulse with the spoke wheels and all the works. That also has an FI available as an option. We'll be taking that out tomorrow for a full review. So stay subscribed. A lot of more coverage coming in from Hero Bikes and then move, we'll move on to other bikes as well. I hope to see you guys on my next video. Thanks for watching. This is Rahul. Goodbye.